Hello everyone, welcome to my shop. I'm Robin. Today we're going to do some machinist problem solving. I have two different pins here that I've made before and uh, usually only did them in quantities of maybe 12 of each. So these were turned and then uh, heat treated and then lapped. Uh, plus or minus a tenth tolerance, nothing uh, crazy. But um, I'm doing 150 of each now and all of a sudden lapping 300 parts sometimes they might have as much as eight tenths on them is just totally impractical so uh, this little adventure is going to be on um, how I figured out how to centerless grind these on my surface grinder quickly without a monumental uh, fixture so uh, let's dive in so here are my uh, problem parts this is .328 diameter 2164 diameter uh, A2 drill rod uh, it's got a hole tapped in it and uh, the ends are uh, have a bevel on them and a, and a smooth blend and this has to be lapped uh, to uh, 0.328 it grows some from heat treat so these can have anywhere maybe four tenths to depending on the stock might have eight tenths on them to lap off so this is obviously done this is ground um, and uh, that was my problem part. had 155 pieces to do with that. This is the other part. Uh, this is 0.3125 diameter, and this was turned with leaving 5 tenths on here for uh, lapping and uh, after heat treat. Uh, and but I wasn't this part I wasn't really considering because at first I didn't think I could do what uh, I'm going to describe here. So. I thought about this and since the grind width of these is a uh, little less than half an inch I could actually grind this with a full face of the wheel with no traversing. These, This particular part could be through fed centerless ground if I had a centerless grinder uh, but I don't. So uh, let's talk about centerless grinding just a little bit for those who have no clue about centerless grinding. Um, centerless grinding is a method of uh, having a regulating wheel which is typically something, uh, it's a rubber bond, hard rubber bond. Think of a Kratex or Bright Boy stick if you've ever seen one of those. Think of a wheel like that that's been dressed true. So it's got a grip, uh, it's got a little bit of very minor amount of cushion to it, but it's got a grippy surface that will tend to hold the part. And you have a rest blade. Rest blade typically has roughly a 30 degree angle on it, such that the part can sit in here. And um, then you have your grinding wheel opposite okay over here and the uh, part sits on the there between those two rests on the uh, on their the blade the regulating wheel rotates this way therefore the part goes like this with the grinding wheel not against it and the grinding wheel goes like this now what the regulating wheel does is it just keeps the part from spinning with the wheel so it's got more traction here because of the angle um, tends to give a vector where this gives a little more bite into this than on the grinding wheel therefore hopefully you um, have a situation where this turns slowly regulating the wheel turns real slow and the part turns relatively slow and then the grinding wheel obviously goes at its normal surface footage so um, in through feed situations this you actually have a situation where these will run through axially through the blade here and you'll dress with the grinding wheel uh, being uh, progressively smaller towards the end to the finished size and you can actually run apart through one time buzz off the stock and you're down to size now the thing that's um, real important about uh, soundless grinding is this relationship here from center height up to here down to the wheel center height I don't have that drawn very well but basically you have to have this situation here where this is above center and there are angles here that are the optimum angles for rounding action of this. If you have that real too far off, the parts will be all kinds of shapes. They'll really be bad. They won't round up. And if they were round, they can go out of round badly when you grind them. So uh, this is regulating wheel type. Well, I don't have a regulating wheel. There's another type of centerless grinding, which is called shoe centerless grinding. And shoe centerless is typically where you have an actual shoe that rides like this. That's this shoe here, shoe here, and a round part 
let's say it's a um, outer race of a ball bearing um, and you're going to grind the actual ball track in here with an ID grinder. The OD's already been soundless ground, the faces have already been ground, and um, you'll come in here with an ID grind wheel like this and grind this. Well, what, what makes it turn? A magnetic plate behind it, like a magnetic, similar to a magnetic chuck, whose axis is just a little bit off center in this direction here so that there's a constant effect of it pulling into the air and the part actually just rubs on these two shoes sometimes these are a wiffle tree style of shoe where they've got multiple pads and a, and a you know, distributing system to make them even um, but this is a whole science in itself here but shoe centerless is what I said okay I can make something like that for my grinder and what I'm going to do, use for driving is since this has a tapped hole in it I said okay I can put a screw in there like this and then drive it with a ball end uh, hex tool that because this allows me to have this kind of action without having any influence but in order for it to be totally free I have to add another flex here such that I, I'm not putting lateral loads when I do this with the drill okay even though there's some loading it's very gentle I'm not going to pull the part out so this gives me my driving force and with this, I'm actually going to, since the screw turns clockwise, I'm actually going to go against the grinding wheel because I have the torque to do it. So um, that's that. So then I need something that has this 30 degree relationship. So here's my block that I've made. And this is just a piece of A2. I took a dovetail cutter and actually cut into this. And this actually used to be flat here. What you see here is... Um, used to be on top all the way across and that's because I mistakenly not thinking through completely was thinking this is the 30 degrees this is the back but that's because I was picturing the, the grinding wheel situation like this but my grinding wheel situation is actually like this okay in the surface grinder where the wheels above relative to my shoe so um, after I put it in straight and realized, wow, I'm getting some really ugly shaped parts, I realized, duh, <laughs> you didn't do this right. You need your 30 degrees. So that's what this is for. This is actually super glued on in the chuck when I found my angle here. And um, that gives me the, the ability to have my grinding wheel behind center here. So instead of directly above, it's back here. And I quickly got to where I could get this part to round up. The spring steel here um, just loads and that actually holds this in place. So I just picked a, a, a spring steel that holds it in place and so now I've got a situation where I can just spin this with the drill. It's held tight against this. I hardened and ground the two surfaces where this hits and there's only a 64th of an inch difference between the two pins. Um, a little end stop on it so that when I'm pushing in here with the drill I don't push it clean off and um, so you can see that uh, so you can see what's going on here now uh, I did these first and I had, wasn't even sure really how I was going to do the other ones then the other ones I said yeah you know what I could probably take a piece of tubing like this and turn down the head of the screw so that it's also a press fit in the tubing and then put these in and that's exactly what I did I put these in same drill arrangement and spun them like this um, so that's what I did and when I ground the flats here I actually put them in the vise the same vise that I used to hold it so I ground this and then I ground this uh, uh, bearing face back here remember this is hardened A2 here I actually just um, sort of induction hardened these with a TIG torch in the areas where I needed it to be hard the rest of it's still soft um, and that way when I put this in the vise uh, I was really getting good straightness so that's the whole system there. We've got the driver, and um, I got some pictures here showing it in action. Uh, so the purpose here is showing you problem solving using a few details of what you know and uh, coming up with a, a solution. Um, and this really ground unbelievably well, and it looked, literally took uh, a, not, a few seconds to actually grind this, the actual grinding part. Loading took obviously a little more than that and screwing the things on and off. But the actual grind time it was just 
buzz down and I come in, came in and um, I'll show you in the video where I come in with the indicator and I'm actually watching a 50 millionths best test indicator for my zero position and checking where they are so um, just thought this would be a neat idea guys might uh, this is very limited use here because of the um, size of this but the principle and the idea of doing shoe centerless uh, on the um, surface grinder is just an interesting thing I thought you guys might get a uh, kick out of seeing this Picking up the threaded parts, using the drill driver to thread in my drive screw. Get ready to load that into the fixture. Slide it in under the spring. Drive underneath, I have a stop on the grinder for the axial position. I have a rubber band sucking it tight to the stop. Put the driver in, spin it up, feed down. You'll see the sparks there. We're only taking a little bit off. Get out from underneath. Blow it off, slide it out. Finish is really nice. Um, really happy with that. Here's the close up version, blowing out the seat, making sure we're not sitting on any grit. Sliding in the part, up against the stop, axial stop, okay. letting it slide down in against the uh, stop. And here you watch the indicator, you'll see me feed down to zero and then back off again. And you'll see the spark, corresponding sparks, sparks out, get off. That indicator's up on the uh, up on the uh, column where I can see it. Slide the part out and check with the indicating mics here. One division is one tenth on this. Uh, nice and straight, nice and round. Even though you can't check that round is here, I did check round this other way, B block, and it's good. Remove the screw and get ready to do the next one fire it up and the other ones I just did by using the uh, tube plastic tube that you saw where I pre hope you found that interesting uh, I didn't have much time to take a bunch of detail about construction and how I did things on this I'm not changing my style I just didn't have time to uh, do much more than I showed uh, as far as how they were built uh, I just had to get the job out the door um, Thanks to all the new subscribers. Appreciate it very much. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, please uh, subscribe, share, tell your friends, and uh, I'll be back.